Hi everybody, this is Dr. Kat Vlies from Central New Mexico Community College and we're using CNM glass here to go over a, a brief lecture on blood pressure regulation. And following this video, there might be one more video that continues what we start here. Blood pressure is a very important vital sign that you'll be collecting from your patients and it provides quite a bit of information about what's going on in the patient's body because if we take a look at the formula for blood pressure, remember blood pressure is defined or the formula for it is the flow of blood multiplied by peripheral resistance and typically we take a look um, at systemic blood pressure like mean arterial pressure um, or MAP and therefore if we look at the systemic blood pressure, we can just look at um, flow as cardiac output. So we can replace that F with cardiac output still multiplied by peripheral resistance, of course. And then don't forget that we can tease out cardiac output into stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. And then all of that still multiplied by peripheral resistance. So what this now shows us is that blood pressure depends on all the vari variables that impact stroke volume, things that impact heart rate, and things that impact peripheral resistance. <clears throat> now our focus is going to be on those three cardiovascular centers. I'll just call them the three CV centers that help regulate blood pressure. And you may recall they're called the two cardiac centers being the cardioinhibitory center, I'll abbreviate this, the cardioacceleratory center, so these two together we call the two cardiac centers, and then there's the vasomotor center. I'm trying to make not, my pants not squeak too much. Um, so the, these together um, are all are forming our cardiovascular centers and they're located in the medulla of the brainstem. Okay, so if we now come back to our formula and if we want to bear in mind that we want to learn about how these three centers here control blood pressure, then with regards to peripheral resistance, we're going to be interested in how uh, peripheral resistance changes in the form of vasoconstriction and vasodilation let me grab another pen here can change peripheral resistance you know very well that there are that's a much better pen isn't it you know very well that there are many additional things that can impact peripheral resistance, but we're going to focus on these because they're directly related to your vasomotor center, for instance. Heart rate is pretty obvious. We need to look at that as a variable that impacts blood pressure. And then what are some of the variables that can impact stroke volume? Well, again, in our discussion here, we would need to take a look at how contractility is going to be uh, impacted via these cardiovascular centers. Are there additional things that can impact stroke volume? Yes, remember there's preload, there's afterload, but they're not directly controlled by these cardiovascular centers. So we're looking at contractility. We'll just repeat heart rate here and how vasoconstriction and vasodilation can change peripheral resistance and how that then, or all three of them, therefore impact blood pressure. So all of these are impacted via the cardiac, via the, um, are impacted by the um, autonomic nervous system, I should say, via the cardiovascular centers in the medulla, the ones listed here near the top. And of course, with regards to the autonomic nervous system, that could be the sympathetic nervous system, or sympathetic fibers, as I'll just call them. And then there are the parasympathetic fibers as well. 
recall that anything autonomic nervous system is part of the motor division, right? So these are going to be neurons that carry information from the medulla or from the central nervous system, I should say. So let me put that here. So they carry action potentials from the central nervous system to their effectors. Remember, that's what motor neurons do. And what do we mean by effectors? Effectors are going to be all of our the different muscle types in the body and all of our glands. Well, when we look at what we're dealing with here, we're clearly dealing with cardiac muscle tissue and with regards to vasoconstriction, vasodilation, smooth muscle. Okay, now if we look at the heart, where we're focusing on contractility and heart rates, then we know that uh, the heart is innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. And therefore, when these sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers secrete their neurotransmitters, we're going to see a change in contractility and heart rate. On the other hand, we're going to also see that your blood vessels are almost exclusively only innervated by your sympathetic fibers. So when it comes to our blood vessels, they are only impacted by sympathetic fibers. There are some exceptions to that rule, but for our general purpose here, for our class, for us to better understand this whole blood pressure regulation mechanism, assume that your blood vessels are innervated by sympathetic fibers only. Your heart, on the other hand, is characterized by dual innervation, both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Now let's take a look at what kinds of neurotransmitters are secreted by the sympathetic fibers. Your sympathetic fibers, when they are activated, they're going to secrete norepinephrine. On the other hand, your parasympathetic fibers, when they're activated, they're going to secrete acetylcholine. Now, when you studied skeletal muscle in AMP1, remember that your somatic motor neurons, so we're not talking autonomic for a second here, but your somatic motor neurons, they also secreted acetylcholine. But any acetylcholine that lands on skeletal muscle is always going to cause depolarization and therefore contraction of the muscle. That is not always the case here in the autonomic nervous system, right? So for instance, when acetylcholine is secreted onto our heart, it's going to act inhibitory. On the other hand, if, if norepinephrine is secreted onto the heart, it is going to act excitatory onto the heart. In other words, when acetylcholine lands on the heart, you could actually say it's going to therefore diminish contractility, diminish heart rate. On the other hand, norepinephrine secreted by these sympathetic fibers is going to increase contractility, increase heart rate. And of course, that will therefore uh, um, change the blood pressure accordingly. Now, with regards to the blood vessels, that norepinephrine that ends up on the blood vessels will always act excitatory. In other words, when norepinephrine lands on our smooth muscle of our blood vessels, it is going to promote vasoconstriction. The more norepinephrine lands on our blood vessels, on the smooth muscle cells of our blood vessels, the more vasoconstriction. So how do blood vessels vasodilate? There is no parasympathetic innervation. It's merely by less norepinephrine secretion. We could argue that we're going to inhibit many sympathetic fibers that are going to the blood vessels, and therefore less norepinephrine lands onto these blood vessels, and therefore they cannot constrict as much. Or you could argue that they are vasodilating. So this forms a nice background, a bunch of information 
that we needed to really get clear in our heads to now next in the next video learn how our cardiovascular centers, these three centers here, uh, control blood pressure exactly. And it's going to happen, of course, via our sympathetic fibers and parasympathetic fibers and how they then impact these three different variables that we have listed here, contractility, heart rate, and vasoconstriction. So that's for our next video. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Till next time.